Hey guys, how's it going? Let's talk about system design. Right off the bat, I'll tell you guys that system design is difficult. And that's probably the reason why you don't find any single tutorial or single book or even a course that teaches you system design and why it's so vague and ambiguous and almost everybody seems to struggle with it. And that includes experienced engineers like me. The reason for that is because system design as a whole is a combination of your knowledge, curiosity, and experience. And all of those three things are extremely difficult to just attain over a period of three months or six months or even a year through one or two resources. So it generally requires you to put a lot of effort, to read a lot of different resources, blogs, articles, watch conferences, and along with that, also try to implement a lot of these things yourselves. But that being said, there are a couple of really good resources that you can use to start building your knowledge around systems, especially large scale distributed systems and how they're designed. And in this video, I'll share some of those resources with you and kind of give you an advice on how you should approach them to start getting better at system design. One more thing that I wanted to add is any book or resource that I share in this video or any of my other videos for that matter are resources that I've read personally and found them useful. Before we get started, if you're new here, I make videos about software engineering, productivity, careers and success in tech and technical interviews. And if you're into that kind of stuff, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell icon so that you don't miss any new videos. All right, let's get started. So basically when we talk about system design, it's essentially divided into two parts. One is the core infrastructure side of things. That's generally what people mean when they say systems design. The other side is also covered under system design interviews, but that's more on the product side. And some companies like to refer them as product architecture or product design. But just be wary that when you walk into a systems design interview, the interview can either go very infrastructure focused where you talk about uh, data storage and systems in the core of the back end, or it can go sort of towards the product where you kind of gather requirements, build APIs and sort of interface between your uh, client devices and your um, server-side technologies. So just keep in mind, and I'll try to split my recommendations on those areas as well. So I'll give you recommendations on core system design, and I'll also give you recommendations on the product side. So let's get started with the core infrastructure or the systems design side. There are a few books that I want to recommend here. The first one is Web Scalability for Startup Engineers. The reason I like this book and honestly recommend as your first book into learning system design is because it touches on all of the core concepts in a way that is not too overwhelming for a beginner. It talks about the general idea of system design, the principles of good software design, building front-end layer, web services, the data layer, uh, talks about sharding, caching, replication, redundancies, failovers, that kind of stuff. It also briefly ventures around asynchronous processing like messaging and all that. It also talks about why searching is an important thing when you've got a large volume of data. And really it's sort of a good overall package for you to build your knowledge around systems design. And like I said, it's easy to read and touches on all of the important topics. Great book. If you are just starting into system design, read this, read this multiple times and you'll get an overall great start to understanding what system design uh, entails. So once you've finished that book, the second book you'll approach is called Designing Data Intensive Applications. And this is sort of considered like the Bible of system design books. It is much more dense than the first book I recommended. It talks about details on specific implementations of things. Like for example, if you realize that, hey, you can add as many app servers and you just need to replicate them and have multiple versions. So you can load balance your traffic into each of the app servers. Maybe that book just talked about like a basic mod based hashing strategy and never told you what the drawbacks of that. Maybe they briefly mentioned about consistent hashing. And this book will go into great details about what consistent hashing is, what are the pros, what are the cons, even like what happens when there are multiple writes or multiple reads? How do we make sure that the data is consistency? So like dives much deeper into the gap theorem and also suggests like algorithms like two phase commits or three phase commits and paxos. I mean, you may not need that for your technical interview, but just having an understanding of what the complexities of certain algorithms, especially when you want transactions over distributed systems, it, it's a good place to be. So I think this is the second book in your system designs journey where uh, 
Uh, you sort of got the surface level understanding from the first book. And this is where you want to sort of dive deep into like the nitty gritty of what are the challenges around building data intensive, distributed, large scale systems, right? So highly recommend this book. In fact, it's one of those books that you buy and probably never sell. I'll, I never sell any of my books, but if you are the kind that likes to recoup some money, this is probably one of them you keep with you forever. All right, and then the third book that I have is called Building Microservices. Even though for your interviews, you will be expected to design the most fundamental, like our core infrastructure for whatever they're asking you. For example, they will ask you, build a storage system like Google's cloud storage, right? Even though that already exists and in real life, you'd probably already have something that you can use. So you'll probably build a, a, a large scale system that sort of uses these pieces already. But in your interviews, they'll make you design the actual thing, right? Like build a search engine or things like that. So why I'm recommending this book is it's more a real life where you'd probably use existing microservices and build a distributed system where they're based around a lot of uh, small functional services, right? And then that itself poses a challenge because there are certain architectural patterns and uh, design decisions you have to follow in your dealing with microservices. When you initially start designing systems based around microservices, everything, everything seems decoupled and you get into this crazy train about decoupling things and uh, you know everything being an independent unit of function and it's all cool and all, but then once there's like a bug or once there is like it's large enough or you have so many microservices, debugging becomes like a nightmare or deploying becomes a nightmare. Like if you have like 10 different microservices, okay, auto scale is cool, but how do you now deploy like a small change and test it out before everything gets deployed, right? Like, so a lot of these other books don't talk about the challenges around debugging, testing, deploying large scale systems. And this book, I think covers those. And it's very interesting, got some really good stuff. And to solidify your knowledge on system design, again, it also talks about the same things in a very microservice approach. So I think these three books together sort of form your baseline knowledge about, you know, or, or you form your tool set to design systems, right? So yeah, this is also highly recommended. And as a side bonus, you don't really need to read these two books, but I have two more books here as a bonus for system design that I recommend. The first one is called Microservices Patterns and best practices. This also sort of like is a supplement to the earlier book, Building Microservices, where they talk about like some patterns and this actually has real code and some examples that the author presents. And I thought this book was pretty useful. So go ahead and get it if you if you want to get into the whole microservice thing. And then the last one that's not really related to systems design or microservices or anything is called Domain Driven Design. It's an older book. The benefit of this book is Whenever you're designing a large scale system, you're always sort of talking about the domains, whether it's like data modeling or designing parts of the system, thinking about what a domain covers. And there's a concept of bounded context in this book, kind of figuring out, okay, this is the idea of this domain and these are the boundaries of this context. So I should make sort of things in this cluster coupled and then they should communicate with this other cluster even though it's the same system dividing things by domain really helps keep your performance security uh, deployment everything related to that uh, context very easy and and sort of like packaged together so that's like whole idea for example if you have like a website that's very read heavy and maybe not that much for write one of the way you can split it out is have a completely different path for read and completely different path for write so that your writes never need to scale but your reads need like massive scaling you know um so you can do that kind of stuff and that's sort of borrowing from the idea of domain driven designs. But then, like, like, like I said before, it doesn't really pertain directly to any of the concepts. It, you can do domain driven design in your actual code implementation, like data modeling or microservices, anything. But I think just having the idea behind your head and how you can think based on domain first um, really helps, I think so. Very highly recommended book. The last part I want to talk about in this video is the product design side of 
system design, I suppose, the product side of system design. And this usually comprises of designing uh, or, or modeling data and designing APIs, right? Like for this, I think you need a good understanding of how to go about building solid uh, APIs that are uh, extensible, that are reusable, and that don't have too many changes. Uh, so you need like good understanding of how APIs work and how client server architecture work. And there are two books that I would recommend. The first one's called RESTful Web APIs. This basically gives you a very good overview of what RESTful Web APIs are. And of course, like REST is not the only way to design APIs. There are certain circumstances that you don't want to be RESTful, you know, and that's a different topic. But I think you should at least understand one approach and just designing normal HTTP based web API that is RESTful solidly kind of sets you up for at least understanding how APIs work, what are the good practices. And to be honest, in modern high scale, high throughput applications, you're probably using RPC style web APIs with like gRPC and protobuf or something like that for just for the high throughput uh, and low latency. But just understanding REST is, I think, a common ground because it's been there for a while and a lot of people uh, kind of, even your interviewer will know about it, you will know about it, and it's, it, it doesn't hurt to just model things on REST API. And of course, if you want to go ahead and learn about gRPC and all that thing too, go ahead. But I think this book is a good start and it'll give you the knowledge that you need about designing APIs. It talks about what REST is, how to use hypermedia. It talks about pagination. It talks about versioning, the HTTP verbs, you know, the protocol itself, uh, some compression, serialization and that kind of stuff. And it's like a good overview. Uh, but even if, like I said, even if it's not RESTful and you're doing our RPC style, these these concepts are still useful to have. The second book that I recommend is called Build APIs You Won't Hate. And I found this book really nice because it doesn't like really go towards here's an overview of web APIs and here's what you should do. It sort of gives you example about how not to do things. And I think that's a very intuitive approach where you've just read the first book that you kind of have a rough idea. And then this gives you all the bad ways of doing things. Um, and I found it really neat. And it uh, again, talks about how to pass query parameters, what are the right things to do. Again, versioning, payload, that kind of stuff. But from a don't do this kind of perspective, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, good book. I recommend it. And then the final book that I want to recommend, and this is more of a, a list of interview questions on a book. Uh, so it's called the System Design Interview, and it's just got a good collection of like 15 or 16 system design topics. It's got a brief, brief introduction as well, but that's not really the point. I think it just got like all the interviews in details. For example, uh, design a rate limiter, and you can just go there and like the chapter will full on give you an idea about how you would uh, design a rate limiter, right? One thing I do like is he takes a good nice nice template about how he goes about solving these problems and gives you nice illustrations and diagrams and explains the algorithm at least they're trying out fully and like kind of uh, proposes like four or five different approaches of doing things and and it is pretty detailed to be honest I think there's there's a good amount of discussion around here and one other thing that I also like is he gives you reference material for everything that's discussed in the solution so you can go further and read more about the topic uh, so consider this not like a your like tutorial book or reference book kind of thing but this is more like a collection of system design interviews in depth and with more resources to kind of follow up and i think it's a handy book to kind of review right before your interview outside of these books there are also sort of domain specific books for example if you're doing system design and you say that you will be using uh, asynchronous messaging or event based system uh, then the question will come up like what are you going to use if it's distributed queuing system you talk about kafka but then the interviewer can easily go into in-depth details about kafka so if you have never used kafka you're in trouble so it's also a good idea to pick like the top specific technologies in each area what i mean by that is so for distributed messaging kafka is sort of like the de facto choice so having a good uh, read through about uh, Kafka or understanding Kafka or reading a book about Kafka is also a good idea. So at least you know how the queue is actually distributed, what Kafka provides, how, how what sort of uh, persistence guarantees it gives, how it uses the append only log to store the 
messages, serializations, and that kind of stuff that would be really useful. Same with if you say we want to use NoSQL, maybe like read on like something like MongoDB, or if it's a wide column, Cassandra is like a super popular choice with like high scale systems, especially because of its write performance. So like maybe read a book on Cassandra. I will link some of those books, especially for designing event driven systems, Kafka, Cassandra, graph databases. So if you choose to, you can read through those as well. And like I promised before, I'll also link out all the free resources that are available, uh, lots of blogs and nice articles and conferences that you can read or watch. Before I end this video, because it's getting too long, I do want to say one thing. When I search for system design interviews on YouTube, I do find that there are a lot of videos where people just solve a specific question. For example, design Uber and almost every other video will just go read the blog article that Ubers just posted themselves and then just read it a couple of times and then just kind of present that blog to you as a video. They'll probably use either quad tree or some geospatial data indexing data structure and then they'll talk about the same stuff. And then it's just like their proposed solution and one solution, right? Like the problem, and I keep saying this, and th this is what I mentioned about my Algo Expert review too, is like, where is the follow-up here? Because in a real interview, the interviewer is not gonna sit down and just listen to you do a full design and then just be happy with it, right? So the moment you say you're gonna use like a geospatial index or a quad tree, they're gonna follow up and ask you why. Why would you use this over that? So you kind of need much more in-depth details or um, knowledge about it, or you could say, for example, something like Uber updating location, the driver would probably send their location update to the server or location server every three seconds, five seconds, whatever, right? And that's what they say, and then they move on, right? But in a real interview, the interviewer is likely going to poke you into this, like, why not seven seconds? Why not 10 seconds? What are the pros and cons? How do you even decide whether it's three seconds or five seconds, right? So there is a lot more involved in system design and generally it's a good starting point to sort of watch these videos of a lot of tech channels doing solving interview problems for system design and kind of get an idea about how they approach things. But I'll promise you that that's not enough. Like you have to read books and articles and watch conferences and sort of build things on your own and start asking questions. Like why did they do it this way? Why not that way? Why should I do it that way? Versus like something maybe even crazy that doesn't work like until you ask yourself questions and build that curiosity and kind of find the answer yourself you're not going to get better at system design and and don't take this as me saying hey i know everything and that's why i'm giving you advice like i struggle with the same things like you know like as an engineer i have certain experience i've mostly worked with building continuous integration and build pipelines and if i go to a system design and somebody drills me in say search engines i'll struggle the same way as you do too so what they are really testing is not how much you know in depth about something that you've never worked on but do you have enough curiosity about concepts and engineering and scalable uh, systems that you've read and kept up with the technology enough that when it's a crunch or 45 minutes or 30 minutes you can come up with a reasonable solution based on your knowledge right i strongly suggest stop really like just looking at solutions that other people are doing and try to build your own solutions maybe verify whether your solution fits some famous person's solution or or even better where whether it fits the actual solution that they blocked about you know but try it on your own like read develop the intuition develop the knowledge and try to solve the problem yourself as long as you understand and can figure out that the approach has some drawbacks versus something else and maybe that's a better approach to pick that is system design so that's it hopefully you like the recommendations and you read and enjoy the books and become better at system design if you have any questions let me know message me in instagram or whatever uh, is easier for you guys all right see you next time cheers